After a lot of upgrades this afternoon, Starship lifted off for the seventh time, and like usual, it was very eventful. Notably, this was the first flight of Starship V2, an upgraded Starship variant that features a larger size, new forward flap positions, avionics, and more. For this reason, the plan included a very busy upper stage flight profile, filled with engine relights, the first payload deployment, and then re-entry. Unfortunately, the ship experienced a RUD rapid unscheduled disassembly right around engine cutoff. As for the booster, for a second time, it was successfully caught by the chopsticks on the launch tower, which featured upgrades to its hardware and sensors. Here, I'll go more in-depth into the flight, catch attempt, upper stage RUD, and other details. Starship Flight 7 was more similar to Flight 6. The launch window opened up in the afternoon rather than the morning, which meant the upper stage landing would occur during the daytime, providing much better views. At T plus 40 seconds, there was an opportunity for a hold. However, SpaceX passed right through and the countdown continued. In the final seconds, the water deluge system activated and seconds later, the first stage Raptor engines ignited. Starship then lifted off, clearing the launch tower and beginning its acceleration. Telemetry provided by SpaceX showed all 33 Raptor engines firing on the booster. A camera angle from the ground also confirmed that all the first stage engines were firing. By T plus 1 minute and 22 seconds, the vehicle had reached max Q, the moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket. Onboard cameras showed excellent views looking down at the launch site and ocean. While the stage was ascending, you could see a piece of material on the side of the upper stage flapping in the wind. At T plus 2 minutes and 20 seconds, they confirmed they were hearing good callouts on tower preparedness and manual checks. Soon after, at T plus 2 minutes and 36 seconds, we saw Booster Miko main engine cutoff, which SpaceX calls most engines cut off. Telemetry then showed all but the center three Raptor engines shutting off. Then, while the ship was still attached, it lit its six Raptor engines as part of the hot staging process before separating from the first stage. The booster quickly turned and ignited its center ring of engines as part of the boost backburn, which is intended to use 13 engines. However, the telemetry showed one engine wasn't lit. From the onboard ship camera, you could also see the one missing engine as the booster began its journey back to the launch site. Despite the one missing engine, at T plus 3 minutes and 29 seconds, Mission Control called out, We are go for booster return. At the same time, the booster's center ring of engines shut off. While all of that was happening, the upper stage was still accelerating as planned with its six Raptor engines, three sea level and three vacuum optimized, firing. At T plus three minutes and 33 seconds, Mission Control even said, ship avionics power and telemetry nominal. In other words, at this point in the flight, the ship was healthy and flying as expected. At T plus 3 minutes and 40 seconds, the boost back burn shutdown occurred, with the three final center engines also shutting off. We then saw the hot stage ring being jettisoned and separating from the top of the booster. At this point, the booster was speeding up and losing altitude as it made its way back toward the launch site. Onboard cameras of the ship at T plus 4 minutes and 50 seconds showed the stage over the Earth, with all six engines still firing as it gained altitude and speed. At T plus 5 minutes and 4 seconds, Mission Control called out, Starship Trajectory Nominal. As the booster got closer to the ground, you could see the grid fins working to orient and control the stage. At T plus 6 minutes and 20 seconds, they switched to a great camera angle directly below the booster, which showed the re-entry heating on the bottom of the stage. Then, at T plus 6 minutes and 30 seconds, the landing burn startup occurred with all 13 Raptor engines firing. Only seconds later, it cut the middle ring of engines off, leaving just the inner three. The stage then tilted toward the tower before correcting itself and swinging between the two chopsticks. The chopsticks closed around the middle of the stage before making contact with the two catch points, marking a successful catch. SpaceX switched to a close-up with the catch pins, and you could actually see the stage wobbling within the arm soon after being caught. 
Switching back to the ship, at this point in the flight, the stage was starting to have some problems. During the previous few minutes, the stage's telemetry was looking good, with all six Raptor engines still firing. However, at T plus 7 minutes and 39 seconds, you could see one of the sea level Raptor engines shut off based on the graphic provided. For context, the upper stage engine cutoff wasn't scheduled to happen until around T plus 8 minutes and 53 seconds. The stream then switched to an onboard camera showing the rear flaps of the ship. If you look closely at the right flap hinge, you can see small flames coming from the ship. The camera feed cuts away, but just past T plus 8 minutes, a second sea level Raptor shuts off in addition to one of the vacuum optimized engines. At this point, telemetry is still showing three engines firing in the speed and altitude climbing. By T plus 8 minutes and 17 seconds, another vacuum Raptor shuts off, followed soon after by the last sea level engine. Finally, the speed telemetry, which up until this point was active throughout the entire flight, stops updating. It's believed that at this point, the vehicle likely experienced a RUD. At T plus 15 minutes and 28 seconds, one of the SpaceX commentators was quoted saying, We did lose all communications with the ship. That is essentially telling us that we had an anomaly with that upper stage. We were just coming up to the end of that ascent burn for the ship when we started to lose a couple of the engines, and then we did lose telemetry from the ship. So, at this point, we're assuming that the ship has been lost? After the fact, SpaceX confirmed this with a tweet saying, Starship experienced a rapid, unscheduled disassembly during its ascent burn. Teams will continue to review data from today's flight test to better understand the root cause. With a test like this, Success comes from what we learned, and today's flight will help us improve Starship's reliability. Following this, lots of videos and photos began being posted of the upper stage re-entering the atmosphere in pieces. One video over the Turks and Caicos showed a mass cloud of debris burning up in the sky. The RUD would have broken the vehicle up into many pieces, which then created this large grouping of upper stage debris. In theory, this would have occurred over the ocean, but in the near future, we should hear more about the exact landing location of the debris and what this means for future launches. In regard to how the loss of the ship may have happened and what the future looks like at the end of a live stream, they were quoted saying, we are obviously bummed out about ship. It looks like we lost contact with it a little under eight and a half minutes into flight, roughly when you get to that main engine cutoff. We obviously need to go through all the data. It's going to take some time. In the next hours, days, we're going to figure out exactly what happened, come back, and fly the next one. Reminder, it's a test, it's a flight test, it's an experimental vehicle, so we'll figure out what ended our day today, and make sure it doesn't end our day tomorrow. It's important to point out that SpaceX made a lot of changes to the ship going into Flight 7. Before the launch, in a statement, the company was quoted saying, a block of planned upgrades to the Starship upper stage will debut on this flight test, bringing major improvements to reliability and performance. The vehicle's forward flaps have been reduced in size and shifted toward the vehicle tip and away from the heat shield, significantly reducing their exposure to re-entry heating while simplifying the underlying mechanisms and protective tiling. Redesigns to the propulsion system, including a 25% increase in propellant volume, the vacuum jacketing of feed lines, a new fuel feed line system for the vehicle's Raptor vacuum engines, and an improved propulsion avionics module controlling vehicle valves and reading sensors all add additional vehicle performance and the ability to fly longer missions. The ship's heat shield will also use the latest generation tiles and include a backup layer to protect from missing or damaged tiles. They go on to say, the vehicle's avionics underwent a complete redesign, adding additional capability and redundancy for increasingly complex missions like propellant transfer and ship return to the launch site. Avionics upgrades include a more powerful flight computer, integrated antennas which combine Starlink GNSS and backup RF communication functions into each unit, redesigned inertial navigation and star tracking sensors, 
integrated smart batteries and power units that distribute data and power across the ship to 24 high-voltage actuators, and an increase to more than 30 vehicle cameras, giving engineers insight into hardware performance across the vehicle during flight. They stated, based on the success with the ship in the past few test flights, it's likely that one of these new additions to the ship was the culprit, something we should hear more about in the next few days. This afternoon, SpaceX launched Flight 7, and it was very eventful. On the bright side, we watched the successful catch of the booster for a second time. As for the ship, it experienced a RUD right around the engine shutdown period with visible flames and a loss of telemetry. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.